Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday. It is July 20th, and we just witnessed what is probably the most extreme uh, example of same day delivery for <laughs> Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Yeah, I love I love the headline there, but a successful launch and everybody's safe. Um, I don't know. I was a little worried, but we, it was cool to were. watch. Yeah, the yeah. founder of uh, Blue Origin, as well as Amazon, became the second billionaire to ride his own rocket into space this morning. He launched from West Texas with his brother, an 18-year-old from the Netherlands, and an 82-year-old female aviation pioneer from Texas, the youngest and oldest to ever hurdle off the planet. Yeah, and so this is happening on the 52nd anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. So that's kind of cool, too. And uh, you can see some of the uh, video right there. If you missed it earlier today, it happened uh, a little not too not too long ago. Um, what was kind of cool, I hope we get to the video of that it was like when they landed, you could see him. The windows are so big, mm -hmm. uh, you could see him waving. <laughs> yeah, the seats are right up against those large window. Bezos' parents and other family members were on hand for the launch. Uh, they reached an altitude of about 66 miles up, more than 10 miles higher than Sir Richard Branson's ride uh, just back on July 11th. Yeah, this flight took about 10 minutes. So it was pretty, pretty quick. We were watching here closely as this was happening. There's some video of, uh, this is old video, but that some of the, the people there, of course, uh, like Mark was saying, uh, the 82-year-old uh, Wally, and then also uh, his younger brother as well on this flight. The company has yet to open up ticket sales to the public and is filling upcoming flights with those who took part in last month's $28 million charity auction for the fourth capsule seat. Also want to jump in here and tell you real quick that Sir Richard Branson himself has just congratulated Jeff Bezos and the Blue Origin team on their successful flight from West Texas yeah, this morning. Very successful. We're, we're glad here. Let's look at today's Nine at Night. Haitians are beginning a series of official ceremonies today to honor President Joyvenel Moise. It has been nearly two weeks since he was assassinated at his home. At least six people, including children, are hurt after a house explodes in the Dallas suburb of Plano. Police believe the explosion may have been caused by lightning. They do not suspect criminal activity. The investigation to find an exact cause is still underway. Search crews in Germany are still looking for victims and survivors of last weekend's deadly flooding. The water has completely receded, revealing the full extent of the devastation. As of early this morning, at least 165 people were confirmed dead. With just three days until the Olympics begin, there are new concerns. The event could become a super spreader event. At least 70 athletes and officials have tested positive, including an American gymnast who has withdrawn from the competition. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommending everyone wear face coverings in classrooms come fall, going against CDC guidance, which suggests vaccinated kids and staff can go without. The anti-smoking drug Chantix has been recalled after high levels of possible cancer-causing chemicals were found in them. There's no immediate threat, only if used over a long period of time. The company says to continue using the patches until you talk to your doctor. Ford is recalling over 700,000 Ford Explorers after reports of six injuries related to steering issues. The recall applies to 2013 through 2017 models of the Explorer. Contact your dealer for more information. The Milwaukee Bucks one game away from becoming NBA champs for the first time since 1971. Game six against the Suns kicks off tonight at eight right here on KSAT 12. President Joe Biden is inviting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the White House today to celebrate their Super Bowl win. The Bucs defeated Kansas City in Super Bowl 55 in February, and that's today's 9 at 9. Well, around this time yesterday, Justin Horn was tracking some showers and storms well to our north. And the question was, would they make it all the way to San Antonio? And they did. Uh, it came through with a bang last night. And thankfully, not a lot of severe weather, but uh, actually none at all. We just got some good rain out of it, and that's what we like to see. Uh, the rain has pushed well to the south now, so we're just looking at partly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. We could see a couple more pop-up showers today, but let's look at the radar right now and show you where that rain is. Down there around Catula, stretching over to Beeville, back uh, south to uh, Eagle Pass. And most of that is just moderate to uh, light rain at this point. But moving out of uh, our viewing area, there is one little area of showers and storms moving uh, south towards Falls City, just out of Poth. A few lightning strikes with this, you may get a good quick downpour 
um, that will continue to move south and east. But here in San Antonio, nothing on the radar. We just got a few clouds, and it was a beautiful sunrise if you stepped outside. 73, Bernie State, 74, Boulevardy, 78, New Braunfels. Already looking at some 80s down there around Stinson and 74 in the Valley with some thin high series clouds moving over top of you. Temperatures today close to 90. We'll see a 30% chance of some pop up showers and storms, some sun mixed in there too. And north winds, north winds in July. We'll take it 5 to 15 miles per hour. There are some more rain chances before the heat gets cranked up this weekend. We'll talk more about that forecast in just a couple minutes, guys. That's Justin. Right now we are going to go live to Trans Sky, take a look around town. I-10 at Frio roads have, for the most part, dried out there at the upper lower levels. There's I-35 at Topper Wine. Uh, we've had a pretty good morning commute overall. Uh, here we are approaching 904. We're not seeing any accidents or stalls out there across the San Antonio area. We will keep an eye on things in this hour of GMSA. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers asking for help finding a group of people who robbed a woman on the city's south side. It happened back on July 9th in the 300 block of Ada Street. That's where investigators say the four people on your screen assaulted a woman. They stole her purse, cell phone and her vehicle before they took off. The suspects described as two men and two women. If you have any information that can help, please call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. The trial of Otis McCain entered its seventh day, and so far the prosecution has put over 30 witnesses on the stand. More are expected today, including an expert witness from NASA who works on imagery. That person was able to enhance some video and photos for the state. We have also yet to hear from the lead investigator and the medical examiner. If found guilty, McCain could face the death penalty or life in prison without parole. Court resumes this afternoon at 1.30 p.m., and you can watch it live on our website, ksat.com. Turning to the coronavirus now, will COVID vaccines work if you have a weak immune system? It's a question several high-risk people might be asking themselves. Sarah Costa explains what researchers are saying about the matter. It's a fear for many with weak immune systems. Will this vaccine still protect me against COVID-19? Doctors are saying yes, but not as well. If you have a weak immune system and get vaccinated, doctors say the vaccine will probably not work as well as they do in healthy people. But the shots should offer some protection some protection and that's what doctors say people should focus on it's why vaccinations are still recommended for people with immune systems weakened by disease or certain medications it's also important that your family friends and caregivers also get vaccinated which will make it far less likely that they will pass on the virus some u.s transplant recipients seek out a third dose on their own in hopes of more protection even though the federal government hasn't authorized extra vaccinations I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Guys, back to We have some late breaking news to an update now on that deadly shootout, an apartment complex on our city's west side. Katrina Weber is live right now where police chief just gave an update. Katrina. Yes, good morning. Uh, we did hear from a public information officer just a little while ago, confirming most of what we've been saying all morning, that there was a shootout here at the gates of Capernaum Apartments. Uh, it, there was trouble that started back behind the gates and then spilled out into the front. One of the stray bullets then entered an apartment in this building, hitting and killing a 15-year-old boy who was inside his home playing video games. Let me give you a look at the video from about 3 o'clock this morning. That's when this all began. And again, police say that some other people were having some sort of disagreement in another apartment. It spilled out to the front of the apartment where there was a shootout. Stray bullet went into the apartment of this teenager, killing him right in front of a younger relative, according to uh, his uncle. He told us that there was another child present when this happened. Uh, that boy, again, nothing to do with the shootout. Police did find another man here who was involved in the shootout. He was injured in his groin. He was shot in his groin, taken to the hospital. But police are still looking for the people behind this. They say there are at least three people, three other people who were involved, who they are still looking for. Just a little while ago here, they uh, took down the crime scene tape. We saw them tow off several vehicles from this parking lot. One of them, they told us earlier, is where they found a gun in plain sight, and they're going to try to determine whether that car and that gun perhaps were connected to the shooting. So there will be more information to come later on. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina.
In your morning headlines, an amazing rescue of a pup stuck between two walls and a hero's welcome for officers who saved a family. Our Max Massey joins us live here in the studio. Max, where are we starting this morning? Good morning, guys. A lot of good stories to get to, but before that, some terrifying stories out of New York City. We are starting there with an assault body camera footage showing 27-year-old Tyshawn Hollowell talking briefly to a police officer for hitting him in the head with a glass bottle. New York police say this attack right here it was unprovoked. Now, Hollowell, a New York man, now in police custody after attacking that NYPD officer early Sunday in Brooklyn. Hollowell obviously facing numerous charges, including assault and criminal possession of a weapon. Authorities say the unidentified officer did suffer cuts to the head and the neck. He is expected to be OK. Hollowell, though, scheduled to appear in court on Friday morning. All right, now to a crazy situation, a heroic rescue. Police officers in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, rescuing a family from a house fire over the weekend, all caught on camera. Take a look at this. We're going to explain where this ladder came from. And now the family here that you see rescued from the roof, they get to thank the officer. So let's take a look. All of it caught on camera. Melise Statmuller, her 12 year old daughter, Chloe, her five year old son and all their pets inside the home when it caught on fire. Melissa said she stood on her son's bed. She had to peek her head out of the window just to breathe. She was worried about her two dogs still in the house even after they got out. So the Oshkosh Police Department, they were the first to respond with a 911 call. Officers, the first to respond, took action. They grabbed that ladder from an open garage in the area, brought it to the family, got them off that second story window safely. First thing I saw as I'm running up the driveway was one of my officers uh, carrying um, the youngest son out to an ambulance. We do not fight fires and, and our guys know that, but at that point we knew we just needed to make sure everyone was out and he didn't hesitate. And they are heroes. The family says obviously it means everything to them to be able to thank the officers like they did just there. They saved the family's life. Now, as for the investigation, the fire still unknown how it started. The smoke detectors in that house did not work for now. That family still displaced and they're staying in a hotel. All right, now to a story that'll put a smile on you to start your Tuesday morning. A happy reunion in Ohio after a missing dog gone for five days. You see this? They're hammering into the wall. That is where they found the dog. So Gertie, name of the dog, found wedged tightly between two concrete walls not far from home. So they're probably wondering, how did all of this happen? Wait for it. Wait for it. They got to keep. He's so stuck in that wall. The pup fell through a roof of a hillside garage, a very dilapidated building. And what the officers can explain, the dog fell through the roof. Whatever had been an old wall was replaced with a cinder block wall, keeping it from calling, falling down. She was caught in between the walls. She was discovered by a neighbor who was outside. And look, there's Gertie right there. She got rescued. I heard whining and then I started talking to the whining and my dog was out there too and she barked because she heard the whining and then I heard barking and I thought that sounds like a puppy. Oh my goodness, the reunion obviously a special one, not only for the dog's owner, so excited, but everyone was loving on Gertie. The firefighters also so excited. So guys, imagine you're out and about with your pups and they just start barking at this random wall and immediately the neighbor was like, this is a little weird. Why are you barking at this wall? They discovered Gertie was stuck right there. So adorable, stuck in between the walls. And you guys both have pups, so I'm sure that yeah. this resonates with you. How oh. scary. Poor Gertie. But you can see uh, Gertie's tail just wagging when yeah. she sees the owner. She was a little reluctant at first, but then eventually made yeah. a break for it. Oh, and yeah. safe. Safe yes. home. Thank you, Max. Thanks, right now it's 9-11, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, Democrats remain in Washington after breaking quorum in protest. A look at what they hope to accomplish and what could happen when they return to Texas. And later, the Milwaukee Bucks on the brink of becoming NBA champions. We have a preview of tonight's game. Good morning, San Antonio. We're live from Antonian Stadium with Swift San Antonio. They're headed to the Junior Olympics, you guys. So many talented children here. They're excited. Just ahead on GMSA, we're live with more. And welcome back. It's 915. And San Antonio track and cross country teams headed to the 2021 Junior Olympics. Swift San Antonio is taking the largest group of athletes to the competition that takes place in Houston in about a week. 
and they've been working hard all season to bring back some medals. Alicia Barrera is live at Antonian Stadium with the track stars of San Antonio Swift. Good morning. Good morning. Well, San Antonio Swift is definitely bringing it. They want to bring back some medals or they already have medals. And this is just bringing back memories for me for high school. So very uh, nostalgic, if you will. But Coach Spencer is live with us today. He's the assistant coach for San Antonio Swift. This has been like a long time coming, right? Y'all have worked so hard, uh, 150 athletes. But how many are going to the Junior Olympics? We have about 47 athletes going to the Junior Olympics this year. And then how excited are you? We talked about it. This isn't easy. No, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It teaches them hard hard work and determination, perseverance. And so they're excited. And many of them are have the opportunity to get gold in, in Houston this year. And so just behind us, you see this group. We have, uh, these are, would be the teen girls, right? So yes. uh, tell me about the work that they've put in and how they're looking forward to the Junior Olympics in less than two weeks now. Yeah, so this group, uh, they were our four by one um, in the 15, 16 year old age group. And they were first in the region in South Texas. And so they've been putting in a lot of work this year, working hard, even starting all the way up in fe February. So we're excited about what they're gonna bring uh, in Houston. Just tell me about the times. So that group, how fast can they run a four? Uh, no, what is this, a 100 sprint? But their, their race that they actually compete in, how fast can they run it in? Yeah, they run that in like 48 seconds. Woo. Sometimes it can be a little faster. We get the, the, the right handoffs and, and they're going. They're really talented. You know, that makes me wonder, what can I do in 40 se 48 <laughs> seconds? I don't know. So what are you hoping? Y'all are going to head out to Houston um, in less than two weeks now, probably yes. a little bit more than a week. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you hoping for? Well, we have about 30% of our athletes that are standing here and uh, that are top 10 in the nation. 20% of them are, are top three. And so we're, we're praying that we're going to bring back some gold to San Antonio, first, uh, second, third places, and really represent the team in the city well. Coach Spencer, thank you so much for being live with us today and to all these athletes over here that you see. So we're going to be back in the next 30 minutes um, and we're going to be speaking to some of the younger athletes. And then you guys, Max, uh, I know is looking forward to this because he's very competitive. Uh, Mark and Steph, I'm going to actually be running. I have my running shoes on, all right. not the um, spikes that you need, but you guys, I'm ready. So I'm going to be warming up. Coach Spencer, they don't call him coach for anything. He's going to help me <laughs> warm up and try to get something done. Back to you guys. We look forward to it, Alicia. Wow, look at him go. Oh, they're super fast. Go get them, Tiger. <laughs> Alicia did uh, hurdles. Really? In high school, so I'm wondering if we'll get to see that. Yeah, you know it would be great? A little Stephanie uh, versus Alicia. She'll win the hurdles. Will she? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm well, not saying you have to do hurdles. <laughs> I didn't but do any of that in Some high sort of relay or something, or oh, I don't know. She'll win right now. <laughs> yeah. right, gotcha. Hurdles are dangerous. Well, you're, she's wearing heels, too. <laughs> You'd have to change. Steph can do anything, though. I'm even at heels. <laughs> but those, hur those hurdles are yes. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be careful. I pull out a hamstring just thinking about it, Justin. Yeah. 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 Me too. A lot of stretching yeah. before. Yeah. No doubt. Hey, guys, uh, one of the questions I've been getting this morning, we just saw the uh, Blue Origin launch. Very yeah. cool. I was very excited about it. Where is it happening? It is here in Texas, out in West Texas, and we can plot it on the map for you. It's out there north of Van Horn, north of I-10, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. That's in Culberson County. And they had good flight conditions this morning. Uh, obviously, they wouldn't have launched if the, the weather wasn't good. But they had clear skies out there. And uh, that's, that's where it was. Uh, successful. Uh, very cool to see and watch. Sort of history being made there. Let's come back into our area, though, and talk about rainfall. It was good yesterday. We got some decent rainfall in spots. Some heavy rainfall. In fact, the airport picked up over an inch with some of the heavier thunderstorms that moved through San Antonio. As you get down towards Carrizo Springs, around one to three inches, officially about 2.3 inches as you get towards the Kinney Maverick County line. Sutherland Springs, 0.55, and a little closer here in San Antonio, over an inch on the north side, and then the uh, northeast side, places like Selma, almost an inch and a half. As you get down to South San Antonio, the numbers weren't as great. Stinson was about a hundredth of an inch. And southwest side didn't get much rain at all, unfortunately. But th there are some more chances. We'll have some more shots at rain coming up here next couple days. You can kind of pick out where our boundary is down here, uh, stretching just north of Corpus back out to the uh, west near Carrizo Springs. And that's where a lot of the rain is now. And it will continue to p press south. So Catula is still looking at some moderate to even heavy rain. But the rain is moving out of uh, Carrizo Springs. And a little further east, we are seeing a couple little showers there around uh, Carn City, Falls City, right along 181. These are starting to die down, though. Did have some lightning earlier around Forestville, but these should 
continue to weaken. I think as they move southeast and nothing here in San Antonio. Here's the scene outside right now. We do have some high clouds over top of us. 78 degrees northwesterly winds at six and temperatures in the upper 70s with some low 80s down there at Stinson. Clear skies as you get up towards Kerrville, 74 degrees here, 78 in Del Rio, 75 Uvalde, 80 in Victoria and two points. They're down a little bit from yesterday, but not much. We're not going to see a lot of dry air moving in here, but northerly wind should bring the dew point down just a hair this afternoon. Here's what our forecast looks like as we get towards midday. A couple showers trying to pop up and with some daytime heating, we should see some isolated showers and storms. Certainly won't be as widespread as yesterday but it'll be a hit or miss downpour. And once the sun goes down, we'll lose a lot of that activity. Longer range, we do have an area of low pressure that'll be moving across. And so by Thursday, we'll be in a good position to get scattered showers and storms. Probably our best chance for rain, but then that low moves away. High pressure builds in this weekend, and that means heat. July like heat will return. It looks like Saturday and Sunday. So 30% chance of rain today and tomorrow, 40% chance Thursday, and then we crank up the heat 92 Friday mid 90s this weekend. It will also be humid, so be prepared for more typical July weather guys this weekend. You uh, used the bright red sizzling uh, font there for heating up. I yes. did. Yeah, yes. it's the official color there. Appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. You got it. 922 about 78 degrees and still ahead on GMSA at nine. It's easier now more than ever to buy now and pay later. A look at some of the services out there and how to avoid putting your money at risk. And welcome back, it's 925. Buy now, pay later. It's a payment option that's becoming more popular among online shoppers to buy clothing, electronics, gym equipment, and even vacation. Ivan Herrera breaks down how the service works and the pitfalls to avoid in this week's Money, It's Personal. You've probably seen new payment options when you're at the online checkout. One of those is Buy Now, Pay Later, which is offered by a plethora of companies at different online retailers. The service has become so popular that a recent Credit Karma survey found it has been used by 42% of Americans. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau says Buy Now, Pay Later allows shoppers to set up payments with little to no money upfront for purchases. The items can range from less than $100 to several thousand. Buy Now Pay Later providers require applicants to be at least 18, have a mobile phone number, and a debit or credit card to make payments. They must also be able to validate your identity. Once you're approved, the purchase will be sent to you and the cost will be split up into bi-weekly or monthly payments until the balance is paid in full. Approval takes minutes with no interest or finance charges. While the payment service is convenient, the CFPB offered the following factors to consider before using it. First, make sure the payments fit into your monthly budget. Next, do your research to find out if a buy now pay later company reports to credit bureaus. If you make a late payment, it could harm your credit history. You may also face late fees if you miss your due date and beware of overdraft fees if you don't have enough funds to cover an automatic payment. You should also take into account that buy now, pay later may not offer the same protections as a credit card. This may make it harder to dispute scams or return merchandise paid for with the service. Finally, make sure you compare buy now, pay later to other payment options for which you may be eligible. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. They're pretty convenient. You've had good luck with... Oh, not Lana? me. I I'm scared to try it just oh, well. because I... Don't think I'll be able to stop, oh, yeah. but uh, yeah, uh, so I'm trying to, you know, hold off so on it. Klar it's our producer, uh, Dylan, who's tried it. Klar Klarna and a then a after pay. After pay and then a firm. I've had good luck with a firm. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah, I bought like a purple bed and I think even this watch mm -hmm. on a firm. Really? Yeah, so. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell my husband, well, Mark, Mark did it. Yeah. There you go. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Just make your payments. <laughs> Definitely. 928, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. A breakdown of what's next as Texas Democrats continue their protest against a GOP-led voting bill. That's next in a live report. Plus, game six tonight. Will the Bucks? take home the NBA title, or will the Suns force a game seven? We are breaking it all down. We are talking Team USA, Keldon Johnson, and of course, Cowboys camp. 
to politics now. The special session here in Texas remains on hold as the walkout of House Democrats stretches into another week. Democratic lawmakers broke quorum in protests of an elections bill proposed by Governor Greg Abbott. We bring in a digital journalist, Ferris Sabawi, who just published a newsletter on KSET.com explaining the situation and what's next. Good morning, Ferris. Hey, good morning. Uh, so good to join you all. Glad to have you here, Ferris. First, the walkout stretching into week number two. What are Texas Democrats hoping to accomplish at this point in Washington? Yeah, Mark, well, like you mentioned, uh, they walked out of the special session, much like they did at the end of the regular session to protest this uh, election bill. Now, this election bill uh, has stuff that Democrats take some offense to, things like uh, onerous restrictions, they say, on absentee voting. Uh, it would end drive through voting, 24-hour voting. And this time, they traveled to Washington, D.C. in hopes of taking their case to Congress. They're hoping that they can convince the Senate to pass its own federal election uh, elections bill that would really undo a lot of the things proposed in the Texas state law that's being debated right now. Uh, the odds of uh, convincing the Senate to break their filibuster rule, highly unlikely. So really, they're just trying to raise awareness uh, on a global scale at this point, and uh, we'll see how long they can hold out. And Ferris, we've seen a response for Governor Greg Abbott, but in general, how have Texas Republicans responded to the walkout? Yeah, so House Speaker Dave Fillan, uh actually uh, told Democrats that he's going to charter his own plane uh, to Washington, D.C. to come pick up some of these lawmakers. As you can imagine, no takers for that. Uh, obviously. Uh, another thing they did was the Texas House did vote to uh, authorize these arrest warrants for these Texas Democrats, but that's really a civil penalty. It's not a criminal charge, and uh, it holds no jurisdiction beyond state lines. So Texas Democrats, uh, you know, feel pretty safe staying out uh, outside of Texas, and uh, they're really going to stay there. But in the meantime, the Texas Senate is still working. They've passed a lot of bills. They're hoping that the House can, you know, establish a quorum uh, again soon enough to try to pass these bills. Uh, again, really unlikely there. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, as of now, everyone's holding firm. And that brings us to our final point, Ferris. Is there an end in sight to the walkouts? And what are those next steps? Yeah, that's the big question here, Mark. Now, the Democrats say they're in this for the long haul. Um, but something's got to give eventually, right? Staying in D.C. is very expensive. Um, now Texas Dems have some COVID issues to deal with as well. Uh, really, they're looking to try to hold out. But Governor Abbott is going to call special session after special session. Uh, he's already promised to do so. So uh, the Democrats eventually will have to come home and uh, put up this fight. And, and we'll see if they can get any other concessions on that bill and see if it's something they can potentially uh, vote for. All right, Ferris Sabawi, thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks. Thanks, Ferris. Have a good week. Outside with live cam, we've got some sunshine out there filtered by some morning clouds. Any more storms today, Justin? We can see a few more, but it's not going to be like yesterday. We had quite a few move through a nice line with a frontal battery, at least a battery coming through South Texas and kicked up some pretty hefty showers and storms. Take a look at this picture coming in from Ingram. It's a pretty scary looking cloud. Typically doesn't do much. It's just kind of the leading edge of a thunderstorm, but always looks ominous and uh, can put down some pretty good winds there. That was again in Ingram. We had these storms spread across the hill country in the South Texas and through San Antonio, at least through most of San Antonio yesterday evening. One uh, byproduct of the rain is the mold. It really jumped up today. 18,470. It's in the very high category. Pigweed is low at 10. And uh, looking at the uh, satellite and radar, you can see where the rain is now, all pushing south of the area. Still some rain in Catula and just south of Beeville, but it is moving south. And here in San Antonio, we're left with just a few thin high clouds. We'll be up around 90 degrees today, 30% chance of rain during the afternoon hours. Just those pop up quick downpours. We'll see some more chances tomorrow and a little better chance on Thursday. We'll have more on that forecast coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Then a nationally ranked track and field and cross country team headed from San Antonio to the Junior Olympics in less than two weeks. Nearly 50 Swift San Antonio's athletes have qualified for more than 75 events and they hope to bring back the gold. Alicia Beretta is live at Antonian High School with some of the top sprinters in the nation. Good morning. Good morning, the top sprinters, and it's definitely not me. And the sweat that you probably see on my face is just because I'm nervous, because I'm standing next to greatness. These ladies are awesome. First, we want to talk to Jada. Jada, how old are you, and how long have you been running for? I'm 
I'm eight, and I've been running for until I was five. And you run super, super fast. So what's your favorite race, and how fast can you run it in? My favorite race is the 1500, and I can run it in, in five minutes and 36 seconds. And she's one of the athletes, most of the ones that you see here are headed to the Junior Olympics. So she hopes to bring back the medal. So good luck to you. And then over here, we have another runner. How old are you? And then what is the race that you love to run? I'm 11 and my favorite race is the 1500. And um, I love it because you just get to run. Out there. You just get to get out there and run. I was talking to Jayla earlier and I'm like, what do you feel when you get out there? And you say that it's just happiness? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you nervous or excited for the Junior Olympics in Houston? I'm nervous and excited at the same time. Well, we wish you both girls the best of luck. You all can make your way out of the field here. So you guys, here's where it comes, what we promised, uh, the race. Jacqueline, so what do we have? What do y'all have? Because I definitely don't have it. And how does that help you with your training? Um, these are resistance bags. It helps with um, our lift to get our legs up in good form. And then what are y'all going to be running at the Junior Olympics? We're going to be running the 4 by one Right. And then right now we're just going to run the one, which is 100 meters. So Robert, uh, hats off to him behind the camera over here because he's wearing all the gear and he's going to run with us. All right, coach, count us down. All right, ladies, oh, ready? <laughs> run us through your marks. Set. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my, goodness. Goodness. oh my gosh. <laughs> Robert's ahead of the Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, 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 we're good. <laughs> Are we still good? <laughs> You're still on. We can. <laughs> can we get a do over? Y'all, we're okay. <laughs> can we get a do over, coach? <laughs> awesome job, Alicia. Awesome job, ladies. Robert. The ladies. Ladies. Yeah, the ladies, the ladies ran a great race. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we never saw Alicia. You won, right? Of course. <laughs> Um, you didn't see me because that's what I was trying to say. Robert was ahead of me. He was running faster than I was. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh -huh. San Antonio Swift, they're headed to the Junior yes. Olympics. A lot of them, uh, close to 50 athletes making their way to Houston. So we want to wish them the best of luck and for being good sports. And I'm out of breath, you guys, but... San Antonio Swift. They are amazing. <laughs> Robert, you too. Back to you guys. <laughs> Great job out there. It's hard to, you know, after you run to give your report. <laughs> so you still got it. And thanks, Robert, too. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness. Live TV. I never saw Robert's thumbs up, so like, hey, you okay? I think he just kind of went like this. Photographer down. 939, about 79 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And if you've ever dreamed of a remote control lawnmower, you're going to be in luck. One man is selling them details coming up. And welcome back. It's about 9.43. Today could mark history in the NBA. Will the Bucks win their first NBA championship in 50 years, or could the Suns push for a Game 7? We're sure going to try. Plus, Cowboys camp is getting going this week. Max Massey joins us live to break it all down. Plus, Team USA and an NBA draft preview. All right, so we are running out of time. Alicia, we really should start sports with Alicia <laughs> because that was just heroic in itself. But I want to start with the story. From our own Stephanie Serna, woke up Saturday morning with like six texts from Steph, <laughs> just so excited about this game. This is game five. Tonight is game six. Before we get to game six, though, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton doing what they can. They made it so close. <sighs> there he was, Devin Booker, 40 points, doing what he could. But then on the other end, we had Giannis. We had, oh, I really just want this one play. Oh, all right, so anyway, Suns doing what they can. I can't even explain how excited Stephanie was when she was texting about Drew Holiday. Unsung hero, there it was. <laughs> Literally rips the ball out of Devin Booker's hands, throws the lob, Giannis Antetokounmpo with the dunk and the stare down, closing up the game. Milwaukee fans going nuts, and so is everyone else watching the game. The Bucks stealing one in Phoenix, Chris Paul walking away. So guys, tonight, Milwaukee could win. The first NBA championship for their franchise in 50 years, or the Suns could push for a Game 7. And if they push a Game 7 and win, that would be their first ever. Remember, Charles Barkley 
took the team to the right. 1993 championship, but of course, you Michael know, Michael Jordan. Jordan. The Bulls. There you go. <laughs> Michael Jordan. All right, stay with basketball. Team USA scheduled to fly to Japan in the Olympics yesterday, but just before they found out another member of the team, Zach Levine, entered COVID protocol. He couldn't even go to Tokyo for now. He could still make the trip later, but Let's give a rundown of Team USA so far. Not exactly according to plan. They haven't been doing so well. Remember, they stumbled. They lost two upset exhibition losses to Nigeria and Australia. But here's the good news. Keldon Johnson scoring 10 points in the third quarter alone and 15 in the game. He went 7 of 9 shooting. USA ran away with it. 83-76 in a victory. Whew, his energy, infectious, sparked the Team USA's lethal transition game. They beat the Spanish roster, a little older and slower, but here we go. They are set for Tokyo. First game, July 25th, 8 a.m., because they're in Tokyo, and they are taken on France. Okay, we're going to take a pause from basketball right now because it is a special week. We are reporting to camp, and by we, I mean Greg Simmons and our KSAT Sports crew. They were up dark and early on the plane. you got to check Greg Simmons' airport picks. They're pretty fantastic. All right, they are at Oxnard. They should be at this point. Number of excuses that the Cowboys could have used to rationalize their pretty terrible 6-10 and 10 record last year. Brand new head coach, we had the pandemic, we had the new rules and regulations. They lost their starting quarterback end of the season. Remember, Dak had that horrific ankle injury, but that is past. It is a new season. We are turning the page, and this year, guys, there are really so many storylines. Mike McCarthy, year two. Dak is back, one of the highest, if not the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. Zeke. Coming off less than 1,000 yards rushing for the first time in his professional career. Can he get it back? And, of course, that defense, that atrocious defense, one of the historically worst in Cowboys franchise history. But here's what they did. Eight of their 11 draft picks this year drafted defensive players, plus my boy Micah Parsons out of Penn State. He is their first-round pick. Can he be the quarterback of that defense? And, of course, fans back in the stands. We are excited. And then the last question... Tight end. You know, we had Jason Witten. We were spoiled for so many years. Who will be the starting tight end? And all this. So much more. We have the answers. Some of them, at least. Some of the speculation. KSAT.com. And, of course, live reports from Oxnard, California, from our own Greg Simmons throughout the week. I believe that starts at 5. And then Jerry Jones on Insta oh, Replay yeah. coming up Later Sunday this night. Week. Yeah. Go. All right, Max. Thank you, Guy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin. Things warming up a little bit, but not that much. Okay, yeah. so we've been doing pretty good, yeah. right? I'd uh -huh. say temperature-wise, it's going to change this weekend. Get ready for some big-time heat. I think we're in the mid-90s. Even that, at least we're not uh, dealing with triple digits, right? This was the scene yesterday out near Deerfield, so that's 64 Hebner area, and you can see the heavy rain coming down, a little bit of minor flooding back there. They picked up close to an inch in that area. That was one of the bigger totals around San Antonio, but the rain came down pretty good. Some uh, clouds coming through right at about dinner time, just at the end of the, the commute there, which caused a few problems. But all that rain now is to our south. So Corpus Christi over towards uh, Carrizo Springs, uh, Catula, and that is all sort of dissipating and continuing to push south and away from us. A little closer look at the radar there. Still some moderate to heavy rain just south of Catula. The rain is out of Carrizo Springs now, and uh, even seeing most of the lightning strikes starting to go away. Some activity south of Beeville, still a few lightning strikes down there. If you're heading down to the coast, it is going to be a little bit wet, I think, uh, this morning, but hopefully some sun this afternoon. In those showers we were watching around Carn City, those are falling apart. A little bigger picture here across the state of Texas, and we'll put on the visible satellite. You can see where some of the clouds are. It's going to take some time for those clouds to burn off, but I think we do go partly cloudy this afternoon. And we still got flow out of the north. So any little disturbance uh, and with that flow, we may get a couple of isolated showers or storms uh, developing this afternoon. Take a look at the highs across Texas. These are incredible. 80s and low 90s for most of us. Uh, this is really nice for July. We should be uh, around 90 this afternoon. Not much of a heat index, maybe a little bit out there later today. Uh, there's uh, the live look outside, 78 at the airport, 81 Stinson, 79 Kelly, 78 at Randolph. And we're still looking at a north northwesterly wind. 73 at Bernie State, 76 in Hondo. You got 79 in Pleasanton and 79 right now in Kennedy. And dew points are in the 70s. So it's still pretty sticky, but these numbers are down just a hair from where they were yesterday thanks to that northerly wind. Here's what the forecast looks like. Uh, by the time we get into noontime, it doesn't really show that much out there, but I think by the afternoon you'll see some of these pop-up showers and storms. I'd say a 20 to 30% chance of rain. We won't see the coverage like what we saw yesterday. It'll 
be a hit or miss type situation. And then once the sun goes down, we should lose a lot of that activity. Longer range, we got an area of low pressure that moves across Wednesday uh, into Thursday. And I think by Thursday, it's in a pretty good position to bring us scattered showers and storms. So that's our next best chance of rain. But then that low moves away, high pressure builds in and by the weekend, the rain cuts off and the temperatures go up. 30% chance of rain today, tomorrow, 40% chance there on Thursday. And then by Friday, we're looking at drier conditions in mid 90s over the weekend and going into next week, guys. Expecting the heat. Thank you, Justin. And mowing the lawn can be exhausting, especially with these hot temperatures. But an Illinois man has come up with a way to have the mower do all the work while watching from the comfort of his living room. Julia Avery has the details and the special reason why he's doing this. Picture this, it's a hot summer day, the grass needs to be cut, and you can mow it while enjoying a glass of lemonade in the shade. Matt Sabo in O'Fallon, Illinois, made that dream a reality. Go forward and go backward and left and right. He made remote control lawn mowers. He says it takes 20 minutes off of his mowing time and helps with his grass allergies. It helps other people who can't get out and still want to mow their grass, things like that. It, it gives them that ability to do, still do what they enjoy doing. Making these machines helps the user, but it also helps Sabo's family. I actually build these and sell them really to help fund my daughter's genetic condition. His daughter, Andy, was diagnosed with chromosome 18P minus. Sabo works a full time job, then comes home and works on the mowers on nights and weekends. Not to mention going to all of uh, Andy's therapies, all of her doctor's appointments. So it's it's a full time schedule with everything. His new business is taking off on social media. He's trying to catch up with the demand while also creating new products for all the seasons because fall is going to come up and what's everybody got to do in the fall? Rake leaves. I actually have one in the works. And that was Julia Avery reporting. As a hand-built deal, you can buy uh, some ones from, you know, brand names, but they're, they're pricey, upwards of $1,800 to $2,400 wow. a piece for a robotic lawnmower. That's more than a, a Roomba for the, for the inside of the house. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on how you do the math, that's for sure. Oh, 952, true. about 79 degrees. We'll be right back. You're one going to find and share this article from ksat.com. <laughs> or, or, or not. Or not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate the picture. Yeah, so this is about their, that little creature right there. Uh, it's the acid shooting land lobsters that live in Texas, and they're being uh, spotted because of all the rain. Vinegaroons pinch with what are called heavy mouth parts? Yes. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Spotted over in Big Bend National Park. They're actually called whip scorpions. Mm -hmm. But they're not actually scorpions. Yeah, right. they, they actually spray out 85% uh, acidic acid to yes. protect themselves. 